ACCA, Deferred Action for Childhood Rivals, could be dead thanks to the story we've been talking about, the caravan of Central American immigrants coming up from Mexico. The president said it is too late to work out a compromise on DACA. He now says Republicans in Congress ought to use the nuclear option to pass a tough immigration bill. Will that happen? Should it happen? Britt Hume has been following this kind of thing for a long time. That's why he's our senior political analyst. Britt, what does this mean? Is this an actual change? Is this something that's going to happen anyway? And where does it go? Well, I wasn't around when the filibuster started, but I'm, I've seen a lot of arguments about the disposition of the filibuster rule, which is what yeah. we're talking about here. When he's talking about the nuclear option, he's talking about the abolition of the filibuster. Right. And the filibuster, the filibuster on the face of it looks like a bad idea. Instead of being able to pass something with a simple majority in the Senate, no, uh, if somebody stands up and wants to talk or, or, or takes advantage of the filibuster rule, you need 60 votes to choke off the debate and get to a vote. That's what it comes down to. And presidents and indeed members of Congress of both sides have been complaining about this for years, but they have always held back from abolishing it completely. They've nibbled at the edges of it, Tucker. They did it for Supreme Court nominees, now for other uh, uh, presidential appointments, <clears throat> but they have not done so for legislation. And there are, re there are reasons for that. First of all, anybody who's in the majority knows that before long uh, that person may be in the minority and would look very differently upon the need for 60 votes. Yes. Uh, the other reason is that if you have to get 60 votes, that encourages bipartisanship. That encourages the enactment of legislation that at least have some support on both sides of the aisle. So those are points in favor of the keeping the filibuster rule. And I don't think that the Republican leaders in the Senate are going to abolish it on the say-so of President Trump, much as he might want them to do so. Yeah. Do you, do you think if Democrats take the Senate that the filibuster will remain in effect? Well, it has so far, and I think that, you know, Republicans and, and, if, and if they do take control of the Senate, of course, the president can block whatever they do with a veto. Right. Uh, and that requires, you know, a supermajority to overcome. So what that would not be the situation that would, would uh, change, might change the president's mind or, or the mind of Republicans who want to do away with it. But uh, people like Mitch McConnell, when they were in the minority, made very effective use of the filibuster rule in order to block legislation that uh, they didn't want. And remember that the only time that, that um, President Obama was able to do much was the first couple of years for, when, for, when for a period of time he had a veto-proof, I mean, excuse me, a filibuster-proof majority. And that right. was how Obamacare got passed. Fine. People who are complaining about the filibuster ought to remember that for the remainder, basically, of his term, his agenda was legislatively frozen because he could not get to summon the, the, the 60 right. votes necessary to pass anything major. And so he couldn't. Republicans, a lot of them, a lot of, and some Republican supporters uh, like the filibuster just fine then. They don't like it so much now. She on the other foot disease. Washington is always occasioned a lot of that. That's how we got Doc. I remember that. Okay, so I need your perspective on this. I found this annoying, but maybe we're making too much out of it. So Jim Acosta, the head White House correspondent <coughs> over at CNN, showed up at the annual Whitehead, White House Easter egg roll and started yelling. Here's part of it. President, what about the DACA? What about what's going to happen to you? Didn't you kill DACA, sir? Didn't you kill DACA? Just a second thought. So, I mean, give me some perspective on that. Is that, if you were supervising reporters, and you have, you were bureau chief here for a long time in Washington, and one of them went to the White House Easter egg roll and started yelling, would you say, good assertive journalism, crossing some line? How would you respond? Well, uh, let me take you back to my days as a White House correspondent. Um, yelling questions at presidents at events where the, que the questions and the mere questioning might seem inappropriate is a very old tradition yes. at the White House. It's been going on for a long time. Presidents come out, they have a little photo op with somebody, and they get shouted questions. <clears throat> Most presidents anticipate them, some don't. N none of them has ever really liked it, but nobody's ever been able to do anything about it. And in this particular instance, Acosta's question got an answer. So if the president is willing to answer the question, it's pretty hard to argue that it shouldn't have been asked. If I have objections to Jim Acosta, and I don't, I don't follow his work terribly closely, but I've seen some of the things he said in the course of his normal reporting. Mind you now, Tucker, he is a beat reporter. He's a street reporter. He's not a commentator. He's not an editorialist. He's not even an analyst like myself. And he is, seems perfectly free to advance his opinions about President Trump in his news coverage. I would if I were a bureau chief, I might find that quite objectionable. It was almost exactly five years ago that a White House correspondent who I supervised, who worked for me, yelled out a question at President Obama. 
and, and was rude about it, honestly, uh, but was attacked, it, no ruder than Jim Acosta just was, but was attacked as a bigot for doing that, almost universally in the press. The standards have changed, or am I just imagining that? No, it's just a double standard that we all have been witnessing for years, Tucker. I mean, President Obama enjoyed a certain protected status because he was African-American and because he was a Democrat and a liberal. Uh, those things do not normally apply to Republicans, particularly Republicans so universally loathed among most of our nation's news media as this president is. So he doesn't get the same kind of treatment. On the other hand, I guess it's fair to say he doesn't act like most presidents either. And True. Uh, I, you know, I guess we can't get around, get around the fact that a guy asks, the guy yells a rude question and gets an answer, and the answer you know, makes some news, which I guess his answer <laughs> on DACA did, then you know, maybe, we're all, maybe we're all better off. That's a fair point, I will say. Brett Hume, thank you. Good to see you. You bet. You bet.